Why does this matter? It matters for music and worship. If I've been speaking along the right lines, we needn't be ashamed of being Protestants. The church is held to be responsible to certain texts because language has become central to God's own self-communication. So the Protestant breathes a sigh of relief. However, also, if I've been speaking along the right lines, it's quite possible for music to be faithful to those texts in its own ways. And in principle, therefore, I see no reason why we can't allow and encourage the use of wordless music in worship. And there, the Protestant shuffles uneasily. Second, what we've been saying matters for theology, the disciplined exploration of God. Can theology be content with the media of words alone? It will be a primary verbal discipline, of course it will, but with the media of words alone. For a variety of reasons, in Western theology over the last few hundred years, music, along with the other arts, has been marginalized from the disciplines of theology. The hills may be alive with the sound of music, but divinity schools are generally not. And if I've been speaking along the right line at times, there are times when theologians might find they can turn to music in order to be more faithful to the texts they revere. That's what I was trying to say last night about the Trinity, for instance. I've been suggesting that musical sounds offer a distinctive, nonverbal way of rendering some theological realities more intelligible, and thus can enable us to understand rather better how our theological language might be bearing on those realities, and thus more of what we might be intending by our language, so that we can employ it more responsibly. 